بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Just as general advice for seeking the knowledge the scholars have written extensively about this and there are so many books uh, from the Salaf uh, regarding this topic about seeking uh, the knowledge and Fadl al-Talib al-Ilm, you know, uh, uh, the, the benefits of seeking knowledge and so forth, uh, just be as brief as possible and mention some things, uh, uh, summarize very briefly some of the things Sheikh Salih bin, uh, Sheikh uh, bin Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al-Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, what he mentioned, uh, we'll summarize it very briefly as advice to our brother, studying in, in Egypt, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and all those who are going on the path of knowledge, and bless us all with uh, and first and foremost, as the scholars make clear for us, and as first and before the scholars, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear that sincerity, uh, sincerity is what allows for us to have our deeds accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the first condition. As the ulama, they make clear that in order to have our deeds accepted, there are two conditions. And the first is ikhlas, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you are worshipping Allah alone without any shirk, not to show off, not to gain aspects of the dunya, etc. And that you are doing it in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And those are the shurut or shartan, those are two conditions for having our deeds accepted. Now, with regards to seeking the knowledge, of course we need sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And bin Uthameen, we're going to read uh, a few of his statements regarding this uh, very important topic to let us know and illustrate for us the importance and the greatness of seeking the knowledge. He mentioned this in his book, Kitab al-Ilm, uh, about in the chapter, The Manners of Talib al-Ilm. And he said that the first thing, he said, Al-Amr al-Awwal, Ikhlas al-Niyya lillah azza wa jalla. He said, the first thing is having sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, Bi'anna yukun qastuhu bi talib al-ilm wajhillah wa dar al-akhra. Li'anna Allah hafza alayhi wa raghaba fihi. Faqala ta'ala, fa'lam annuhu la ilaha illa Allah wa staghfir li dhimbik. وَثَنَا عَلَى الْعُلَمَاء فِي الْقُرْآنِ مَعْرُوفِ بِنُ ثِمِينَ رَحِيمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى He said the first thing is having sincerity in your intention for seeking the knowledge to uh, please Allah the Almighty, to know that this is ibad, to know that this is worship. And he said, so the, the, the student of knowledge, he must have his intention seeking the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has encouraged and desires this for us or for the one to seek the knowledge that he's doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah the Almighty says in the Quran then know that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and seek forgiveness for your sins and this ayat here this shows us that the first amr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made in this ayah is that we have knowledge he said fa'lam he said no that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Letting us know that the uh, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, um, having knowledge, having knowledge, Allah ordered us to have knowledge of Him, of Tawheed, of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that we do it, that there is a sincerity in that. And then bin Uthameen, he said, and Allah throughout the Quran, and it's well known that he has praised the scholars. You know, that the scholars in, uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Yaksha al ibadi al ulama or Aksha al ibadi al ulama, Allah in the Quran, which means uh, that the most God fearing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's slaves are the ulama. They're the scholars. Why? Because they worship Allah based on ilm on knowledge and based upon basira, insight and fiqh and understanding and wisdom of the religion. So they worship Allah and they fear Allah more 
Because those are, we're talking about the ulama, those ulama, those scholars that practice what they preach. Those scholars that practice the knowledge they gain. So that, of course, that uh, excludes those scholars that do not practice what they preach. And those scholars that practice bid'ah, that excludes them. Why? Because they are practicing in Hiraf. They're practicing distortion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion and the principles of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And so, then Ibn Uthameen, he said, Even, فَيَجِبُ الْإِخْلَاسِ فِيهِ لِلَّهِ بِأَنْ يَنْوِيَ الْإِنسَانِ فِي طَلَبَ الْعِلْمِ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَإِذَا نَوَى الْإِنسَانِ بِطَلَبَ الْعِلْمِ الشَّرْعِي أَنْ يَنَالَ شَهَادَةً لِيَتَوَصِلْ بِهَا إِلَى مَرْتَبَةً أَوْ رَتَّبَةً فَقَدْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ عِلْمًا يَبْتَغِي بِهِ وَجْهِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ لَا يَتَعَلَّمُهُ إِلَّا لِيُسِيبْ بِهِ عِرْضًا مِنَ الدُّنْيَا لَمْ يَجِدْ عِرْفَ الْجَنَّةِ يُمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يعني ريحها So Ibn Uthimeen رحم الله تعالى He emphasized, he said So then, it is an obligation to have sincerity in uh, you know, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in seeking the knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that the person who is seeking knowledge should do it in order to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty. And that a person should have this sincerity and this intention in their heart to seek knowledge of the Sharia. And that they should not be seeking uh, knowledge in order to gain certificates and degrees in order that they can raise their status or their level. And in this regard, then the Shaykh mentioned the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam who said, whoever seeks knowledge, uh, seeking the pleasure of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Almighty. And he doesn't, uh, and then he should not uh, seek knowledge to gain, uh, or, he, or he is not seeking knowledge to gain something from this this worldly life, like material game, gain, and he is not doing it, uh, or if he does it for this for this reason to gain this material gain, then he will not smell the fragrance of paradise on the day of judgment. So that shows us, and then Ben Othimin says, "Wahad a wa'id shadid." He said, and this is an, a very severe warning. So it lets us know that first thing that we have to advise ourselves with is being sincere to Allah when we seek the knowledge. And I, I just want to add to that, sometimes we get lazy. Sometimes we get lazy or we get tired. You felt, well, you know, I've studied enough today. I'm not saying that we spend all of our time studying and, that, and, and everyone's different in their ability to continue to be in the, the, the text and continue to memorize and continuing to listen to lectures of the ulama or the students of knowledge or the du'at or whatever or, or, or however the different ways that they seek the knowledge everyone's different in, in what they're able to do so you know your ability and so forth but the thing is we want to strive to fight laziness that is something you have to strive to do and one way to do that is by being sincere. So when you find yourself being lazy, say, wait a minute, I'm going to do this. I'm going to try to read this ayat or memorize one ayat for the sake of Allah only. And then Allah will make it easy for us. And Allah raises those people who uh, he gives knowledge. He raises them in status. The second thing that Ben Rathimin said, which is advice for myself and our, and our brother, he said the second thing, رَفَ الْجَهَلْ النَّفْسِهِ وَانْغَيْرِهِ Very important. That, so you're having sincerity. The second thing is, is, is to lift the ignorance from yourself and from those and from others. Meaning that you're seeking the knowledge to get rid of ignorance and to educate others. And so then Ben Othimi, he said, uh, he, he mentioned, uh, he, he just mentioned, so we'll, we'll brief, be brief. He said that, uh, that this is, 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 is the second thing that a person should do is that they should strive to raise the ignorance from themselves. So again, being sincere and trying and making your attention to remove the ignorance from yourself. That's first and foremost. So you can better practice your religion and remove the ignorance from your family and remove the ignorance from those around you. 
And then Ben Rafimin, he said, Well, walk it, you shahid be that ika, for ten we be talabal ilm, rafal jahil and nefsika, will be that ika, tanal, khashiatillah, talalah ta'ala, inna yaksha Allah, min ibadihi al ulama. So Ben Rafimin, he said, he said that the reality here and that uh, what is witness, or, or, or anyhow, uh, what a tal talib al ilm should do is that he should uh, make his intention to remove ignorance from himself, and this will help him to establish God fearfulness, khashya, fear, fear, uh, being khashya you know, being fearful of Allah. And then he mentioned as evidence for this, he said, he mentioned the ayah where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fatir, he said that verily those uh, who fear Allah the most from amongst his slaves is the scholars. So that shows us, as we just mentioned, that that is uh, one of the thamarat al-ilm, is that one of the benefits of knowledge or the fruits of knowledge is that you gain taqwa, you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's a way you can check yourself while you're seeking the knowledge and, and so forth is are you fearing Allah more? Are you watching your backbiting? Are you watching your, uh, you know, what you put into your soul? Are you listening to music? Are you watching bad things? Are you looking at the haram? Are you eating the haram? Are you wearing the haram? All of these things are ways to test your, your taqwa and see if you're benefiting from your knowledge. Is your salat helping you to, to prohibit you from munkar, from sinfulness? If this is the case, uh, if this isn't the case, then you gotta check yourself and check the knowledge that you're seeking, you know. But most importantly, check your intention. Check your intention to see if you're really if your your intention is to raise that ignorance off your uh, from yourself, to remove ignorance from yourself, and that you're doing it for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So that way, you can have the thamarat al ilm that you can have some of those benefits uh, of knowledge, which is taqwa, is taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. Then the Sheikh, he mentioned. The third thing he said, uh, a difa on a sharia. This is very important for us as well. That the another reason and and another advice regarding seeking the knowledge is that the student of knowledge should make their intention to preserve and protect Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's deen, his sharia, the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, in by seeking the knowledge. You gain the tools to destroy wicked, sinful, uh, doubtful things that people try to uh, claim about Islam. For example, some people uh, who claim that Islam is a terrorist religion. The more knowledge you have, the more you're able to deal with that and show no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion is peaceful. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion is, is, is perfect and complete. And it's for all of mankind. And it doesn't distinguish between black, white, red, or brown. And that this is Allah's deen. He, he created and created our, 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 our fitra uh, to, to worship Him and Him alone. And that that is the basis. The basis is not to attack and slaughter as those, uh, those people, those claimants, false claimants make those people who try to create Islamophobia in the West and around the world, and those also those ignorant Muslims who are commit uh, terrorist acts and 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 and, uh, and and have extremist tendencies. You know those extreme du'at. Those people who you know they they declare other Muslims to be disbelievers and innovators very easily and quickly. So those people, the people of fitna, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will deal with them. But you, as a student of knowledge, by seeking the knowledge, you should make your intention to also defend Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen from those people and their false claims. So uh, there's a statement of Ibn al-Qayyim, and I can't think of the exact wording, but I recall reading it, and he was talking about how, you know, al-ilm huwa silah, 
that knowledge is like a sword and it slashes away at the heads of Shubahat. It's like the sword which is destroying and cutting off the heads of doubtfulness and slander against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's religion. And that's how you want to be. And why you see this with those ulama, the rasikhun of al ilm those, now, those uh, scholars that are well grounded. We're not talking about just any of the scholars, but I'm talking about those, those imams of the sunnah in our time and of course those before them. That, that we see, for example, our experience in Medina. We saw Sheikh Abdul Masin al-Abbad, the way he deals with things. When things get out of order, he slaps it. He slaps it with his backhand. And his backhand is what? It's knowledge. He slaps us with ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He deals with those issues. Oh, you're getting out of hand, you need to be checked? Well, let me deal with you with Bukhari and Muslim. So this shows us the importance of ilm, that ilm is a means to deal with doubtfulness. It's a means to deal with uh, uh, those people who try to attack Islam, and it corrects and deals with Ahla Bid'ah and Ahla Zambaka. As Ben Othaymeen, he, he's mentioning here, he said, and if a man from the people of innovation uh, comes uh, to... Uh, to a place... And, and, he, and, and he begins to speak about innovation, and he continues to mention it, then, then uh, the, the student of knowledge should refute this individual. This individual should be refuted. And so this can only be done with what? With knowledge. And that's why it's important to have. And, and Ben Othimina, uh, actually he's saying here, he mentions exactly what I just said. He said, فَعَلَى طَلَبِ الْعِلْمِ and yanwi bi talab al ilm al difa' an al sharia. Lanna al difa' an al sharia la yukun illa bi rijaliha kisilah tamamen. So a beautiful statement. Then what he mean? He said, Rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, So it's on the student of knowledge to make his intention to seek the knowledge to defend the law subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, sharia. Because defending the sharia, it can only happen by men. Meaning not that not meaning that women can't do this, but meaning that 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 that, that strength and that 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 uh, you know that manliness and that uh, that strength in order to defend against the religion, because men, of course, they're the protectors of the community, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says regarding the 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 uh, uh, men's role with regards to men, women. Uh, that men are the protectors and maintainers of the women showing that that's our role so we gotta stand up and standing up in the Sharia to defend the Sharia takes knowledge unfortunately we see many of our brothers and sisters around the world you know they want to be in a protest they want to be in this and they want to be in this and they're striving to defend Islam in the way that they know how even if it may be wrong it may be based on bid'ah it may be based on whatever but the problem is because they don't have knowledge. And so they have this hamasa, they have this, 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 these desires and this energy to defend the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's deen, but they don't have the knowledge to do so. So then they end up making more harm than good. But the talib al-ilm, the one who's seeking the knowledge for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and getting correct knowledge from the scholars, then his knowledge, as uh, the, the last statement Ben Othimin said, Kasalah tamam, and he said it's like a weapon completely. It's exactly like a weapon. That knowledge is your weapon. So that's the weapon of the Talib al Ilm, and uh, those are uh, some of the advices. Uh, ben Othimin, he also mentioned this very important aspect. He said, Al Amr al Khamis, Amr bil Ilm. He said that the fifth thing is that the person you practice your knowledge. And so the Talib al-Ilm, and ya'mal al-Talib al-Ilm bi'ilmihi aqeedatin wa ibadatin wa akhlaqin wa adabin wa mu'amalatin li'anna hadha huwa thamrat al-Ilm wa huwa natijat al-Ilm wa hamil al-Ilm kal hamil lisilahihi amma lahu wa amma alayhi this is a beautiful statement by this Alam Rabbani. And then he said, Well, he had a thabita on a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and who called Al Quran Hujitan Luk O Alaik. So this is beautiful. But what they mean, he said, So the fifth thing is practicing the knowledge. He said, And that the student 
of knowledge uh, must practice his knowledge in his uh, with Akida and Ibadah, his worship, and his manners and his mannerisms and the way he deals with uh, others. Because this is the fruit of knowledge and it is the end result of knowledge. And the one who carries knowledge is like the one who carries the weapon, carries the sword. It is either for him or it is either against him. And then he said, and regarding this, it is affirmed, um, related on the Prophet wasallam that he said the Quran is a proof for you or a proof against you. So that shows us we have to practice what we preach. And that ilm is a silah. And there's so many, so many statements of the Prophet ﷺ. First and foremost in the Qur'an. So many ayats. And then there are so many statements uh, uh, in the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ about practicing the knowledge. And there's so many statements of the salaf, of this ummah, that uh, regarding this, that it's incredibly important that we practice, and we practice in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, in all those aspects, in our, our belief, in the way we deal with one another, you know, that we're not lying and cheating to one another, that we're doing correct halal business. How can you do halal business? You have to have ilm. You have to have an ilm. Kitab biyur. You have to study biyur to know, you know, the, the chapter of buying and selling. You have to study. How do you know how to pray? Kitab salat. You have to study salat. You have to know how the shurut salat, arkan salat, wajibat salat, sunnah salat. So you have to know, you have to know those things. And how do you know those things? You only know those things by ilm. You only know those things by seeking the knowledge. The the Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, "Man yurid Allah bi khairan yathqahu fi din." Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives them knowledge of the uh, of the religion. The next thing Bin Uthaymin mentioned, he said, "Rahimahullah Taala." He said, uh, hikmah. So that the, uh, the talib al ilm he should also have a type of good manners and be wise and, 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 uh, and call, especially with regards to calling others to the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it shows us that we have to, uh, we have to have wisdom, and we have to be wise in our da'wah. And this is a part of the manner of the Talib al-Alam, because as you're gaining that knowledge, you want to spread and share that knowledge with others. And how do you share it? You share it with hikmah. Edu Allah, you call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with righteous preaching and wisdom. Basira, hikmah, fiqh. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says that whoever uh, is given wisdom has been given uh, a lot of goodness. They've been given the khair. The person who has wisdom. So it's up. It's on the talib al-ilm to be Wise. Adu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wa mawidatil hasanati wa jadilahum billatiya asan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and call to the path of your Lord with wisdom and good preaching and argue with them in the best of manners. Look at that. If, if we just study that ayat and we practice that, we would find so much khair. We would find so much change in the way we see the da'wah being spread. We would find that, you know, we don't see, we see a lack of hikmah with some of our brothers and sisters. Because some of our brothers and sisters are extreme. They just attack everyone. And some of our brothers just throw away all the principles of the sunnah. We have to have a middle course. Where does the middle course come from? It comes from fiqh. And it comes from hikmah. It comes from wisdom. And this is the khair that Allah gives us. And that khair would deal, would deal with a lot of our issues and a lot of the things, a lot of the problems we have with one another will be dealt with uh, if we had that wisdom. And there's so much beautiful statement uh, that Ben Uthameen is saying, unfortunately, we just have to go through this very, very briefly. The next thing he said, he said, al amr al thamin and yukun al talib sabrin al al He said that the, the next thing that the, the 
The eighth thing is that a student should be patient in seeking the knowledge. And so that, that's imp imperative, and we all know Surah Al Asr, which combines a lot of those things. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ وَالْعَصَرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by the time, he swears by the time, verily mankind is in a loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Except those who believe. وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And do righteous deeds. وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ And they call to the truth. وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ And they uh, exhort one another to sabr. Or they, they have patience. So there, there's the, the evidence there. And that, that's evidence of seeking the knowledge. And having correct aqidah. And that's evidence for... Uh, 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 after having that knowledge, practicing, وَعَمَلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Practicing that knowledge. وَتَوَصُوا بِالْحَقِّ Then calling to da'wah, calling people while you're practicing and learning. وَتَوَصُوا بِالْحَقِّ And being patient on that call because people are going to reject you. People are always going to disagree with you. That's one thing you have to know. That's also some advice. Speak little while you're speaking, seeking the knowledge and أَطْلُبُ الْعِلْمِ أَكْثَرَ You know, seek more knowledge. The, the uh, ninth thing Ibn Uthameen mentioned, he said, Ihtiram al-ulama wa taqdirum. He said, is, is respecting, being respectful uh, and, and mindful of the way you interact with the scholars. Because you're not going to be able to seek the knowledge from the scholars without being humble. You know, and, and, and being patient. And don't follow people in their mistakes. And make excuses for them in their mistakes. As long as their mistakes are not you know, going against the usul of the religion and so forth. But make excuses when you sometimes, maybe you see a bad manner for one of your brothers, but you know his aqidah and, 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 general, and what he's calling to is khair. But you see this akhta. So advise him. But cover their mistakes. And be patient. Don't just go and spread every time you see a mistake of someone, you go and run and spread it. And that, and that even goes with the ulama. Because you're going to find mistakes. No one is perfect. But... They, their flesh is, uh, is, 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 is sacred. That you cannot eat the flesh and backbite the ulama and speak bad about the ulama. That's very dangerous. It's a very serious and one of the major sins as Ben Othimin mentioned. So be respectful of the scholars and seek knowledge from them. The, 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 the meaning those sound scholars, those so scholars that call the kitab, Allah was sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the minhaj of the salaf of the ummah, the, uh, you know, on the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. Uh, another thing is, uh, Ben Othimin mentioned, he mentioned the tenth thing. He mentioned that Tamasik bi kitabi was sunnah. Very important. He said, and it's an obligation upon the student of knowledge to do all, strive as much as they can to take knowledge from those uh, and his usul, his foundation in understanding the religion from the Qur'an, and from the sound sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and, of course, the scholars of Ahl sunnah So this is imperative. Also be aware of who you take your knowledge from. A last advice that I want to mention, Ben Othimin, he also, uh, he mentions many other things, but since it's only one other thing he's mentioned, let's mention it. He said the... Uh, uh, the, or it's two other things it looks like. He mentioned tathbeet with the bat. He mentioned being firm. And having the bat. So being, being firm upon uh, what you, uh, you know, up, upon that which is sound. And having, uh, you know, making tathabbat. You know, when you hear something, affirming that it's, it's sound. And so this, this works in our lives, that when you hear something from someone, make sure that it's sound khabar. Don't run with it. If you hear someone speaking about someone else, you need to verify that. You need to verify that what they're saying is, is, is truthful. That they're not saying that out of desires or they just want you to be away from so-and-so or something. So you have to do that, and this is the way the religion was uh, preserved. And also making sure that you're taking your knowledge from sound sources. 
and the last thing he mentioned, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that the that uh, the student of knowledge part of their manners is that they should be uh, striving to understand what Allah you know understand the knowledge in the way that Allah revealed it in according with how the Prophet Sallallahu wanted it to be understood so in accordance with how Allah revealed those ayats and wants it to be understood and how the Prophet Sallallahu wants it be un to understood so be careful about mistakes in understanding. There's many people who have memorized the Quran, many people have memorized things from the Sunnah and so forth, but their understanding, their fiqh is not there. Their understanding of the religion, their understanding of how to practice is incorrect. Maybe they're on bid'ah. Maybe they just have many mistakes. Maybe they are on even shirk. There's people who have memorized the Quran on shirk and kufr. People who make tawaf around graves and they, they even have no, major knowledge of a hadith. How many people? Look at Abdullah Heredi and those people, the Ahbash. You know, some of what they've written about him as far as what he memorized is amazing. You know, some of Ahl Bidah, they are very strong in certain sciences like fiqh and hadith. And even uh, some of them in their, and in Quran and in the Arabic language. But yet, their Aqidah is weak. And their Minhaj and their methodology is weak. And so this is why it's imperative to make sure that the knowledge you gain is sound knowledge from sound sources and it is in accordance with the understanding that Allah and His Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, has preferred for us to gain as an understanding. The last thing I want to say is don't waste your time. Uh, especially being in a place like Egypt, you have a lot of people from the West, from America and the UK and different places. Do not mix extensively with your brothers and sisters from the West because a lot of people want to waste time. A lot of people want to waste time with things that are not beneficial and even sinful. Focus your time on learning the Arabic language. Focus your time on learning the Quran. Focus your time on not getting involved in debates. So if someone comes to you, do you know brother so-and-so? Man, he's a hisbi. He's this. He's this and this. Don't waste your time and give that, give that kind of uh, those those things, presidents. I don't say that you don't listen at all, but I say don't, you know, if someone is not bringing you khair, that's going to benefit you, and that it's affirmed uh, uh, statements, then leave it. It'll waste your time. It will be an extreme waste of time, and I've seen many people on both sides of the fence. Those people have wasted tons of time. They've been studying for years, and they gained hardly anything. And I've seen people who ga gained so much in a short period of time. Because they protected and preserved their time. So be careful of debates. And this is the, these are the advices of the scholars. And I will tell you a true story. We went to uh, a place, a village called the Maj, where our Sheikh, Sheikh Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Yarhamahu, he gave us advice. The brother translated for us at this time. You know, we, a lot of us we were fresh out of America. We sat in the Sheikh's house. And the, and the Sheikh gave us three golden advices that I remember to this day. The first one he said, learn in the Arabic language. The second, learn in the Quran. And the third, not getting involved in, in, in uh, you know, Kathra Taqil will call, you know, you know, uh, you know, listening to and spreading things about people, you know, false statements and and wasting time speaking about issues that you have no right to speak about. You know, this sheikh is off it. Uh, sheikh so-and-so spoke about this. You know, spending excessive time in those things, especially if you're not even in a position to gain knowledge from those mashayikh. Don't waste your time. Save your time and benefit. And we ask of all the Almighty, accept this good and forgive forgive our evil. Anything I said correct was from Allah. Anything I said was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Muhammad.